Today we are on the Upper East Side and we're going to start the day with one of my favorite artists, Geneve Figgis. I've been so lucky to be able to see her exhibits over the years. I will include any videos where we've gone to those together below and above, including her last one at Almain Rec in London. But this exhibit is titled Immortal Reflection and it features her signature libertine-esque figures that really border on abstract. And I feel like in this exhibit she actually leaned even more into abstraction than normal. In general, Figgis is known for creating, quote, cover versions of work by famous Rococo artists such as Fragonard and Boucher. I personally like her versions better, but I'm biased. Figgis includes so much personality in her works, and I particularly love her inclusion of little dogs throughout, usually on the laps of their owners, so keep an eye out for those as we get up close. And in general, I love what the art writer and curator Francesca Gavin said about Figgis' work. She said, Figgis creates satirical narratives filled with sugar and cream. After viewing her work, European history can never be seen quite as seriously again.
We're now taking a quick stop into Park and 75 to see two sculptures by Dan Flavin. It's really overwhelming actually to see these sculptures in such a small space and Flavin is quoted as saying, I knew the actual space of a room could be broken down and played with by planting illusions of real light, electric light, at crucial junctures in the room's composition. We're now at Skarstedt Gallery to see an exhibit of new works by Cause, and the exhibit expands over all three floors of the gallery, and it's titled Spoke Too Soon, and it highlights Cause's signature characters that reflect this exaggerated human emotion. These characters are titled Chum and Companion, and in this exhibit, they're illustrated facing horrible challenges where they're just fighting for survival. The gallery says, quote, oscillating between child and toy, subject and object, human and humanoid, causes cast of characters mere a dispirited humanity, but nonetheless make room for a joyous celebration. I just love how precise his paintings are. They look as if they're printed, they're done so perfectly, but the impressive thing is that they're actually hand-painted acrylic paint on canvas. And the large sculptures that you see, while they look like plastic and soft, they're actually painted bronze. I have saved the best for last. This is the first time I've ever been to Salon 94's new space that they opened earlier this year. And I'm gonna bring you all with me. And right out of the gate, we see these incredible works by Anya Paintsell that are created from punching fabric yarn through burlap. And she also adds in her own natural and synthetic hair.
These are works by the French artist Alexandre Diop, and these pieces are a nod to Byzantine era icons, but instead of white men and women, the artist chose to represent pan-African idols such as Miles Davis and Nelson Mandela and more in his works. When speaking about his work, Diop says, I saw art as a way to exist because I cannot seem to exist without saying what I think. I use what appears legible to me like objects because I am interested in creating something that's alive. I want people to feel something, to be impressed, to be shocked, uncomfortable, proud. My work creates another reality, not just on a pictorial level, but you feel the reality. Another part of the gallery features Ruby Neri's exhibit titled Leveled, and Ruby Neri is known for creating a world exclusively made up of wildly animated women. She is quoted as saying, I wanted to create a world outside of the male gaze. And to create these works, Neri leans on her past as a graffiti artist in San Francisco. So she actually airbrushes glaze on her figures that she creates from clay. And these sculptures can weigh anywhere from 400 to 800 pounds. I can't even imagine the logistics that go into place to put one of her shows together. But, uh, and while her world is fantastical, she actually draws inspiration and a reference from well-known art history tropes, such as the female version of Christ the Redeemer in Rio. See if you can spot that at the end. This room is really special because it features something that is a first for the artist, and that is paintings. She's created paintings for this exhibit by mixing oil with dry clay and then scoring or scraping at the canvas. And I kind of love how she's transitioned what she knows from creating obviously her ceramic works and translated that into these really beautiful paintings. I hope she continues to experiment with painting because I think it's a really gorgeous effect. The last exhibit we're going to see at Salon 94, and actually of the day, is by Amani Lewis, an artist who's known for their mixed media paintings that focus on humanity and our inner resilience. And this is the first time that they've created works explicitly of their family, and they were inspired to do so after going home to Baltimore during the pandemic. They documented family members capturing video and audio recordings and mining through family photo albums as source material. And I also love how the gallery has curated this particular exhibit. These wood paneled walls are the perfect backdrop, in my opinion, for these vibrant works. And the gallery states that Lewis asks us to reflect on the responsibilities and tensions within family relations and the possibility of easing them by sharing either the burden or the unspoken, or both with transparency. 
I think we could all remember that going into this holiday season where I'm sure we'll be spending a lot of time with family. Thank you for coming along with me today and I will see you all in my next video where we explore the Dior exhibit at the Brooklyn Museum so stay tuned for that.